air pollution chart. Get ready to fill in this chart using the presentation that I'm going to go over. Every detail on this chart has been carefully picked to be the exact information that you need to know for your AP exam. So every detail on here is important for you to study. Air pollution is a favorite on the AP environmental science exam. You will have many questions in the multiple choice and sometimes on an FRQ that are very detailed and so it's important to pay close attention to all this information. The first air pollutant that you need to know is one that's monitored by the EPA under the Clean Air Act. On your chart, right above where it says carbon monoxide, please write the word primary pollutant or just the word primary. The AP test will often ask you to know which of the following are primary pollutants and which are secondary pollutants. So on your chart, you need to, above the word carbon monoxide in the first column, write primary so that you can memorize that it is a primary pollutant. Go ahead and fill in the description in the next column. So it's a colorless, orderless gas, and it's from the incomplete combustion of fuel. So that means that it lights on fire, it runs engines, but not all of it combusts completely, and so carbon monoxide is a byproduct of this. It is extremely dangerous. It is odorless and colorless, which means that you don't know it's there. So one of the laws in California is for you to have a carbon monoxide detector in your home. Sources can be uh, cars, so vehicles, but this is also buses and trains and anything else that burns fuel. Your lawnmowers are particularly bad um, when you burn wood and then forest fires can all release carbon monoxide. So what happens in carbon monoxide, and you need to know again this detail, is that when you breathe it in, it actually binds to the blood to the hemoglobin sites instead of oxygen, and so it robs your body from oxygen. So when people have a carbon monoxide leak in their homes, um, they often feel like they have the flu and they go to bed because they think they have the flu. And if they don't get out of that home, it can cause death. And there have been some tragic news stories about families where the kids have died um, and their parents wake up, they think they have the flu, but they don't have the flu. And it's tragic stories. So don't play around with carbon monoxide. What have we done to improve carbon monoxide? We put catalytic converters in cars, and that started in the 70s and 80s in cars. It reduces that. It's an apparatus on your car. We ventilate um, like stoves better. So above your gas stove, you have ventilation pipes, and we do a better job with that. And in California, it's a law to have a carbon monoxide detector in your home. The next pollutant is also a primary pollutant, so in that column above where it says sulfur dioxide, go ahead and write the word primary. Sulfur dioxide, dioxide is a colorless gas, and it really comes from coal, so that's the big thing is sulfur dioxide comes from burning coal for electricity, and most of it does. So a very common health problem for almost every pollutant except lead is respiratory problems such as asthma. So if you, for an air pollutant, write that on an FRQ for health problem, it will be right for almost all of the air pollutants. So if you can't remember something more specific, write that. And include the word asthma because sometimes when FRQs are graded, they want a specific disease, so if you just put respiratory problems, it might not be as specific as they are needing that particular year. So just write the word asthma and you're good. SO2 also is one of the two air pollutants that cause acid rain. The other is nitrogen dioxide. So what have we done to help improve it? We have something called wet scrubbers on coal smokestacks, and wet scrubbers capture SO2. You need to remember specifically that it is a wet scrubber. If you just remember the word scrubber, oftentimes it is not specific enough. You need to know that it is specifically a wet scrubber. 
All right, the next one we have are NOx. And you need to know that NOx really is both of these. So NO2 and NO, we just combine because they readily change into to both forms in the atmosphere. They're constantly going back and forth between NO, NO and NO2. So we just call them NOx. Now, <clears throat> NOx can be primary or secondary. So just know that it's both. So you can see a picture here. It is a um, reddish brown gas and it smells bad and it's very reactive in the atmosphere. Where does it come from? Well, exhaust pipes. So that's a huge source, especially in California, but also other forms of transportation as well. And it is what causes brown smog. And it's that color that creates brown smog. So in California, we have brown smog, which is photochemical smog, and it is, the color comes really from um, the NOx. So NOx can also cause um, acid rain. It's not as big a culprit for acid rain as SO2 is, um, but it does cause a little bit of acid rain, but really not as severe. And so in California, we don't have too many issues with acid rain. That's more back east where they burn coal for electricity and they have more acid rain from the SO2. So once again, you have respiratory problems such as asthma. And then what have we done to improve NOx? We have emission standards. And so these emission standards are from the Clean Air Act. And part of that is that we require smog checks. So every two years in California, you have to go and get a smog check to make sure you're not polluting beyond what is allowable by law. And then catalytic converters also clean up not only carbon monoxide, but also NOx. All right, so now the next one that is also a big problem in California and in the Los Angeles region is tropospheric ozone. So remember, we have ozone in both the stratosphere and in the troposphere, and it is in the troposphere. It's all O3. In the troposphere, we breathe it because we are in the troposphere, and so it's bad. Up here in the stratosphere, it's good because we don't breathe it, um, and it's protecting us from UV rays. So the ozone layer in the stratosphere is where it's good. All right, so the basic formula is the sun plus heat plus NOx plus Vox gives you ozone, and heat actually releases more Vox vapors. And we'll talk about Vox in a second. And so that's why in the summer, in the summer, you have more sun, um, sunlight hours, and we're, um, or we're tilted toward the sun in the summer. And then you have heat, which creates more vapors of Vox. And then um, when people drive around and it's hot and sunny, we end up with more ozone pollution. So it's really in the summer in California, in the LA region, that we have the worst air pollution. Some places they have worst air pollution in the winter, like Anchorage, Alaska, has terrible air pollution in the winter because of wood-burning heaters, and it causes um, particulate matter air pollution. But for us, because of ozone, we have worse air pollution in the summer. So smog, it is part of photochemical smog. It damages the immune system, asthma. Now, if you are asked about um, environmental problems, it does these two. So crops become damaged from it and plastics and rubber degrade due to it. So let's say you have a car that you don't drive very much and you have to still replace the tires every couple of years because they degrade over time, little bits, little bits, little bits, due to ozone air pollution. 
And we have made a lot of progress due to the Clean Air Act and the emission standards. So your car gets a smog check and they also check for ozone, um, NOx, I'm sorry, they check for NOx and NOx creates the ozone. But because when we reduce the NOx and we also have laws to reduce vapors from volatile organic compounds, the VOX, that we have in turn reduced ozone. One of the things that you need to know, though, is that our Clean Air Acts have reduced the levels, but with global warming, we have hotter temperatures, and so we will probably get um, higher air pollution levels as we get warmer and warmer through the years. Global warming. Now let's go ahead and write our equations for tropospheric ozone. And so you have a spot on your chart to write the equations. So the first equation that you need to know is we have NO2 that comes out of an exhaust pipe, and then light from the sun hits it and splits it into NO plus O. Then this free atom combines with oxygen gas to create ozone. Now, uh, NO is also an air pollutant. So NO2 and NO are both kind of do the same thing. That's why we call them NOx. Okay, then what happens is that the NO combines again with uh, ozone, O3, to give us NO2 and oxygen. And so we're back where we started. And so it just um, kind of cycles that way. And the ozone levels never get particularly high, except for Vox. So, but, dot, 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 Vox come in and stop this equation. The second equation. Okay, so when we have more Vox in the atmosphere on hot days, Vox are um, things that can become vaporized and in the atmosphere, they combine to create more ozone. And so it's that, well, the third equation technically um, that reverses it, it stops that reversing equation. And so we have a buildup of ozone in the troposphere. And so you need to know all of this. You need to know that these two create ozone, but it cycles back pretty readily and we never get a huge amount of ozone in the atmosphere normally. But then on hot days when we have a lot of Vox, we, the Vox stop this reversal and we get a buildup of ozone. So we also put a lot of limitations on Vox, and this is one of the reasons why we have special gas pumps in California. We, re, we have these pumps that prevent Vox from escaping when you pump your gas. We know that they cause air pollution, and so we do a lot of things in California to prevent Vox.